We all wear masks. Hey, Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you need from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the mask designer in Power Director 17. If you like using masks, I want you to put hashtag I need more mask love in the video description below. All right, guys, it's time to make some masking happen. Let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 17. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a mask in Power Director. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. And if you subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. Let's mask some stuff. The mask designer lets you overlay video shapes or image shapes to replace or cover items in other images or videos. As you can see, I have two clips on my timeline. The clip in track one will be the background clip and the clip in track two will be the foreground clip. That's the clip that I'm going to apply the mask to. So I'm gonna left click on this clip of this beautiful family. Look at them in the sunrise. I'm gonna click on designer. And then I'm going to click mask designer. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm on the mask tab. And the first section I'm going to go to is mask properties. So under mask properties, there's a bunch of templates that you can use. So if you click on any of these templates, it'll show what it looks like here in the preview window. So we got a beautiful heart here. We could be a superstar. It can be a cloud, whatever you want to do. Now, you have these nodes here on the side. You can place your cursor over a node until you see a line and two arrows. Hold down your left mouse and you can change the size. And you can also place your cursor over any part of the middle of the image until you see a crosshairs with arrows on the ends. Hold down your left mouse and then drag this into position to get just the area that you want to show in the mask. Now, I can also create a mask. So let's say I didn't want to use this mask that I have on here. I can go ahead and click on this shape here or the X to remove all the masking. And if I wanted to use an image, I can click on create an image mask. So when I click on that, I can go to any location on my computer and select the image that I want to use. And let's say I want to use this lovely lady here. I'm going to left click on her and then I'm going to click on open. When I do that, it's going to ask me, hey, do you want to convert the image to a grayscale uh, based on the gray level of that image? Or do you want to use an alpha channel to create the image or create the mask? And I'm going to use the alpha channel, so I'm going to leave that selected. I'm going to click on OK. And now we have a beautiful lady here serving as our mask. And I have the same flexibility to move her where I want, change the size move her around, all that good stuff. Now I also have an option here called create a text mask. So I can go ahead and remove this mask that I created and then click on create a text mask. And when I do that, I have some options here. I can size this down just like I sized down the image mask can move it just like I move the image mask. And then I have options here to change my title, change the font, all kind of good stuff here. If you want to, you can add another image when you use the text option. So here I have insert image. So I can click on that, go to whatever location on my computer I want, and I can select an image to use and click on open. So now I also have an image. And as you can see, if I drag it around, you can see it's also a mask. If 
but also has an image mask that I can use and add to this if I want to. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. So I'm going to click on cancel here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add this mask back onto it. Now, if I want to, I have some other options down here. I have create a brush mask. Now, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So we'll get back to that one. We also have the option to invert the mask. So if I click on this, then you'll see that it inverts it. And then we can add the feathering around the outside to feather the mask using the feather radius option here. Soften it up a little bit around the edges. And then down here, you also have the object settings. So if I click on object settings, then I get some of the same options that I had before, basically of the position. So I could change the position with numbering. Uh, I can choose to ease in and ease out if I add keyframes. I don't have any keyframes added right now, so it's not going to give me that option. I can change the scale of the mask. So if I uncheck maintain aspect ratio, I can just change the width or I can just change the height. Or if I want to make sure that they stay together, I can make sure that maintain aspect ratio is checked. And then whenever I use one, they will both scale together. Then I have the mask opacity, so I can change the opacity of the mask here. And I also have rotation, and I can change that here as well. So keep in mind, you can also change the rotation right here in the preview window. I didn't go over that, but if you Place your cursor over this little green dot until you see two curved arrows. You can hold down your left mouse. And you can rotate it that way as well. So just wanted to make sure you knew what you could do. So that's everything under the mask tab. So if we want to change some motion, we could just click on the motion tab. And here you have several templates that you can use all types of different motions. You click on one and select it and you play it, then you will see that the mask moves following that motion. Now keep in mind, you can change these motions. Just place your cursor over the yellow nodes and you can move them where you want. Um, you can choose from multiple different motions on here if you like. So cool stuff. So you can remove the motion as well. So if I want to create my own motion, instead of using these templates, I could use keyframes. So what I could do is go ahead and click on the position keyframe. And I'm going to drag this individual where I want her to start, which would be right here. And then I can move my playhead to another position. I can add another keyframe. And now I can place my cursor over this little blue dot. Once I do that, I can hold down my mouse, my left mouse. I can drag this across. You can see that it's creating a path. And so I created a path from left to right. So what will happen is if I scrub the timeline, you'll see the motion. If I click on play, you'll see she moves across the screen. So a simple way to create some motion of your own, some custom motion if you want. Of course, I created a real simple one that you could probably use a template for, but you get the freaking idea. You can create your own motion. So I'm going to click on OK. And now let's go ahead and create that brush mask that I skipped over earlier. 
So I'm going to click on this image here of these apples. I'm going to go to designer, mask designer. I'm going to make sure that the mask tab is selected. And under mask properties, I'm going to go ahead and click on create a brush mask. So now the brush mask designer pops up and some tools here you can use. So you can choose what your brush looks like. It could be round or it could be flat. If you make a mistake, let's say I was using a flat brush and I marked here and I was like, oh, made a mistake. I can enable the eraser and I can erase my mistakes. You also have the width, so you can change the width of the brush. So here you can see right now, the brush is a size 20. And if I change it, you'll see it's a size 100 now. So you can change that. You can also change the tracking paper transparency. So this is the difference between your mask and the, the actual picture. So I'm gonna just add something here real quick. And if I change this tracking paper transparency, you'll see that the difference between the mask and the actual picture disappears as I go up. And if I go down, you'll see that it increases the difference between the two. Now that I showed you those tools, let's go ahead and create some masking magic. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the round tool is selected and I'm gonna create a mask of this apple here. So just gonna try to get as much of the apple as I can with this pretty good size brush. So I made a little mistake here, so I'm gonna click on the eraser and I'm gonna erase this little error I made here. So now I'm gonna go back to the round tool I'm going to drop down the width of the tool a little bit so that I can kind of get closer and hopefully don't make a bunch of mistakes. So I think I did a pretty good job here. So let's go ahead and click on OK. And it looks pretty good. But if you ever feel like, eh, I didn't get, like, there's a little bit of black marks here, so I probably need to get rid of those, right? If you ever want to change your modifier, you could just right-click on the mask that you created and click on Modify Mask. And then you can go ahead and try to fix any mistakes you made. I'm just going to make this big here, and that should... Take care of those little black marks we saw. And I'm gonna click on okay. And yep, they're gone now. So we're good to go. So now I wanna create a little bit of transition into just the apple being on the screen and all the other apples disappearing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my playhead forward just a little bit here. And I'm gonna go ahead and go down to object settings. And I'm going to go to mask opacity and I'm going to add a keyframe here. And I'm going to move the opacity to zero. And what that means is that from the beginning to this point, the opacity is going to be at zero and you're going to see everything on the screen. So then I'm going to move my playhead forward to a new position. And I'm going to move my mask opacity to 100 and it should create a new keyframe here. So now as I scrub the timeline, you see that it starts off with everything and then it actually shifts to just the one apple on the screen. But the edges are kind of sharp on here and I want to soften those up. So I'm going to go back up here to feather radius and I'm going to move this all the way up to a 10 so that the edges are a lot softer and it doesn't look as jagged as it looked before. 
And so now if you play it back, Booyaka. I don't know what that means, but booyaka. I've said that in other videos and I still don't know what it means. But now I'm done. So a nice little transition from all of the apples on the screen to just the one apple. So I'm going to click on OK. There you have it, people. How to make a mask using a mask designer in PowerDirector 17. Now, if you decide that you like PowerDirector 17 and you want to buy or upgrade to the software, I'll leave some links in the video description that you can use to purchase it. Those are affiliate links, so if you use them, I'll get a small commission, which will help me continue to create content that teaches you how to use PowerDirector. You pay the same price as if you went to the site on your own and purchased the software. So if you want to help me help you, use the affiliate link. All right, Power Director peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. Now, if you got a tutorial that you'd like to request, make sure that you head over to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk and chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you click the bell, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. That way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.